Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. This is my top five King Kong movies. <laughs> I recently rewatched all of the King Kong movies, including the ones I had not seen. I had never seen the original 1933 version. I'd never, see, never seen Son of Kong. Uh, and I don't remember ever watching the 1976 version uh, of King Kong, but uh, knocked those off of my list of shame. Uh, Rewatched the more contemporary versions of King Kong and decided to make my top five list of my favorite King Kong movies. Let's get it started, shall we, with number five, my fifth favorite King Kong movie. This one is also the most recent movie to come out featuring King Kong. Uh, and that movie is the 2021 movie, Godzilla vs. Kong. This is a movie that is part of the monster, the cinematic monster verse, as uh, apparently. Uh, coined by the marketing team of this movie. Uh, this has King Kong versus Godzilla. I know there's an older version of King Kong versus Godzilla, which Godzilla is another kind of blind spot in my movie going uh, lexicon, uh, which one day I will dig into that giant pile of movies. Uh, but this one is the 2021 version and uh, kind of the sequel to Kong Skull Island. Uh, definitely having that Kong featured, that giant version of King Kong. And uh, when I initially watched it, I liked the movie quite a bit more than in this rewatch. Uh, I still did enjoy the rewatch. I thought the action sequences, the fight scenes between Kong and Godzilla were great. I think the CG is amazing. Uh, and uh, overall, I thought it was good. But... There's definitely aspects of it that don't that I could that didn't need to be there. Uh, the whole subplot of the conspiracy theory podcast guy that works there, uh, it really didn't. I mean, it has little to no bearing on the story. Uh, it was fun, however, to see uh, what's his name? What's his name from the Kyle Chandler? Uh, who was in the 2005 version of King Kong. Uh, Kyle Chandler comes back for another King Kong movie as the father of, uh, who was it? Who is her name? Was it Haley Bo Bobby Brown? What's her name? And, of course, she's not, where is she? She's not even in this. Right? This is a great way to start off the... Uh, the uh, whole shebang. Why is she not? I think it was Bobby Brown from. Um, yeah, Miley Bobby Brown. She's second in line on that list. Oh, there she is. Uh, she plays the kid of uh, Kyle Chandler, Mark Russell, who is a fan of this podcast. And she goes on this ride with not ride, but she's trying to track down the truth alongside uh, Julian Dennison, uh, who is another, like, both, I, I enjoy Miley Bobby Brown, I enjoy Julian Dennison, I enjoy seeing that, I, I love uh, Kyle Chandler as well, but all of their storylines have little to nothing to do. I mean, if you're watching this movie, you're watching it for amazing action sequences. You have the fight scenes of Kong versus Godzilla on the, the, the aircraft carriers, which I thought was great. Uh, you also have their fight scenes in Tokyo, starting off at night in Tokyo with all the neon lights of the city and then turning into the morning. I love that. I love those aspects. But the overall story, kind of set off by Kong Skull Island, is kind of... It's like they changed a bunch of stuff that didn't need to be changed. The idea of Kong Skull Island is that Kong is on this island where there is a portal to the Hollow Earth. And that monsters from the Hollow Earth 
can come through that portal, and it's up to King Kong to defeat them, to keep them from coming and invading the outer Earth. But then in this movie, they take Kong to the Antarctica, to a different portal. To Like, it, it's ridiculous. There's a whole mecha, uh, uh, like a robot Godzilla, mecha Godzilla. So the story aspect is is kind of dumb. Rebecca Hall is in it. Rebecca Hall is great. Like, there's some great actors in this. But the overall story, not great. However, fun action set pieces. So that's why it's at number five. Fun action. Not a great story. Number five. So moving on. Moving on to my number four favorite King Kong movie. This one is one that I had seen, but I did not like it when I first saw it. And I've actually, over the past few years, have wanted to go back and revisit this movie just to make sure that I don't like it. Because when I first saw it, I saw it in theaters, and the sound cut out at the very end, so it wasn't a very good movie-going experience in general. But it was kind of long, so it's like, ah, I don't know. But I wanted to revisit it. And now that I revisited it, it's still not good. And that is why it is at number four. And that movie is King Kong. The 2005 version of King Kong uh, by Peter Jackson. This movie is basically a remake of the 1933 King Kong. Uh, there's a couple aspects of the 76, like in the 76 version, there is a, a cloud that surrounds Skull Island, uh, which not until this movie, uh, did that island, was that island called Skull Island before it was called Skull, there was Skull Mountain, uh, on a, an, an island that, uh, did not have a name, uh, but in this one, so it takes the cloud surrounding the island from 76 but unlike the 76 version where they send like a little dinghy out to go investigate what's beyond that cloud in the 50 in the 2005 version they just take their ship right into the clouds not knowing what's ever in there but i do enjoy there are aspects of this movie that i do enjoy despite the fact that it is three hours and seven minutes long one, like I said, it's the remake of the 1933 version, so it is a director going to film a movie. In the 1933 version, this guy is kind of like a, an Attenborough kind of guy who just films wildlife, and he knows about this island that he wants to go check out and uh, see what happens. And because people want to see a love interest in movies, he decides to bring a, along an actress uh, to do that, to kind of appease that audience. Uh, whereas this one, it also kind of takes a little bit from Son of Kong, where in Son of Kong, that same director, uh, which is the sequel to the 1933 King Kong, uh, it takes the director named uh, Carl Dunham. Uh, he is like, in Son of Kong, he is being sued by everybody because, you know, he brought the King Kong there and, and all shit went down. And uh, he's looking to do another movie in order to kind of regain his career. Uh, so Carl Dunham in this 1933 version, or in the, the 2005 version, he is a director who made a movie and the studio wants to chop it all up and they don't like it. And he finds out that they're going to take his print away from him and take the movie away from him and end his career. So he decides to set off on this uh, planned excursion ahead of time in order to finish this film so kind of similar to the the 33 but mixed with the the cool aspects of this movie are just seeing new york in it's set in 1930s as well so you're seeing like the construction that's happening in in new york city you're seeing like all the old-timey cars and everything that i loved the a lot of the scenery when they're on the boat i love that there's like a romantic comedy going on between adrian brody and uh naomi watts was like okay 
doesn't really need to be it's not necessary but okay like in the 33 version there was a love kind of a, a love interest thing between uh Faye Ray's character and just one of the people on the boat so this one shows more of the kind of backstories for all of these people before they go out on the voyage when this movie goes bad is when they decide to take their ship just blindly through the clouds to get to Skull Island. A lot of slow-mo, like not even good-looking slow-mo. It's like it's like frames removed. It's like it's they made slow motion scenes out of film that was taken at 24 frames per second. Like it's just choppy. It just doesn't look good. Considering all of the technology used in this movie, they, they couldn't get like high-speed cameras to do the slow-mo. And there's a lot of it. It is very much, it reminds me of Zack Snyder. Just a ton, ton of style, no substance. But this movie starts to lose me when they just charge in to this island without seeing. And then literally every rock formation has a face in it there are faces skulls in every rock formation which this this island has like these jutting rocks coming out there's like walls upon walls of this island that's only really supposed to have one wall that prote protects the 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 island people from the kong there's just walls everywhere this like movie does extra of everything so i didn't like that they get there and it's like there's this scene where a herd of brontosauruses is chasing down all of the people involved and it is some of the worst cg it was bad when it came out and it looks even worse today there are so many cg aspects that just look horrible uh there is a fun fight scene between kong and uh t-rex a bunch of t-rexes i thought that was kind of fun uh when they capture kong and bring him to the theater for the first time i wondered how they got king kong inside of this theater there's no way they could have gotten king kong inside of this theater in the 76 version they're doing this this kind of uh the same thing but in like an arena where it makes sense that you can get a giant ape inside but inside this theater, there's no way. There's a, uh, the, the, how did he get him in? The, it's, it's just kind of stupid. Um, the end plane scene where Kong climbs up the uh, Empire State Building and the planes are attacking him, that looked cool. Uh, so there are aspects that looked cool. Like the plane scene was cool. Uh, the fight scene between Kong and the T-Rexes was cool. Uh, but everything else was stupid. So stupid. Like, at one point I had this one higher. And then it's like, because it did some a couple cool things. But ultimately, it's similar to Godzilla versus King Kong, versus Kong. Where it's like, there's a couple fun fight scenes. But the rest of it is kind of nonsense. And the reason why I put this over that movie is because it is a nice remake. They did flesh out characters a little bit more uh, than the 33 version. But ultimately, like considering all of the money they clearly spent and all the CG that they, they put into this, it doesn't hold up at all. It just doesn't look good. It's boring. It's way over long. Um. And just, yeah, there are just aspects of it that were just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to put it any higher. Uh, so coming in at number four is the 2005 version of King Kong by Peter Jackson. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Now you can wear The Many Faces, original art by Ray Taylor. Select pieces from the ongoing series of abstract ink paintings. All products made with high quality materials, made right here in the USA. Go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF merch to browse the entire collection and save yourself an extra 10% when you check out by using coupon code RTS10. 
TMF. So once again, go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF merch and save 10% when you use coupon code RTSTMF. And now back to our show. Moving on to my number three favorite King Kong movie. This is the one that started it all. King Kong from 1933. Uh, I'd never watched this before. This is a movie that is almost 100 years old. This is almost 100 years old, and it's more exciting than the Peter Jackson version that was made in 2005. Now, do the the special effects hold up? Of course not. But neither do the Peter Jackson's 2005 special effects. So that didn't hurt this movie at all. Uh, What I did love about this movie is that uh, almost 100 years ago, they made a movie with like a lot of different special effect techniques that I appreciated. Stop motion, using like a version of green screen, like this actors working against a projection, I believe. Uh, That's how it was done. there's a lot of like there are scenes that are brutal in this in this uh, version that are completely not in the tooth. I mean, or are not nearly as brutal in the 2005 version. There's a scene where King Kong is that like there's everybody's trying to cross over this fallen tree that's over this giant crevice and King Kong grabs the tree and shakes everybody off. And in this version, it's brutal, despite the fact it looks like they're clearly just little claymation people but you see these claymation people fall and smash into the ground below brutal despite the fact you know it's fake but you don't see that in 2005 version people fall or whatever but they don't show them like splat on the ground like it doesn't have that visceral feel that the 20 the 1933 version has um But it's a similar story. It's this guy who is known for nature movies. And he wants to go to this island. And he, because the studio wants to have uh, a female love interest, he casts this woman, played by Faye Ray, um, who is, her character's name is um, Anne Darrow. Same name as as the other one. But uh, Anne Darrow who was just, like, kind of hard on her luck on the streets. Like, we don't really get... Like, there's a lot more backstory to the Naomi Watts version of this character. Um, But she gets brought on just to appease the audience, to appease the producers. And as they go, you know, they, they, they run into... The, the door, the giant entrance, the giant door that's on the wall looks amazing in this version. Um, a little racist. There is a racist character that is was present in the 2005 version. It is insane. There is a stereotypical racist Chinese sh- cook that is in this movie, but is also present in the 2005 But except for the 2005 version, they replaced him with a white guy. Like, he's still there, but he's more of a side character. And they didn't change him. He's still the very stereotypical racist Asian caricature. But now he's also been replaced and delegated to being downgraded to being just a side character in the 2005 version. And they have this, like, wily-eyed a white guy that plays the cook in the 2005 version who is much more of a main character uh, than the Asian character. So it's not only did the Peter Jackson character not get rid of or change the super racist stereotype Asian character, they replaced him altogether with a white guy. They whitewashed it. So this one does have that racism. It also has the fact that when they go to this island, it's a bunch of black people. I mean, even the story of King Kong is almost like a racist allegory for black people stealing white women and black people causing 
destruction because they are so enamored with the beauty of a white woman. So on that level, this the overall story of King Kong can be racist, but as well, like the Islanders are all black people, and it's it really shouldn't be like they're not like it's not an African island. And that's changed in the 2005. 2005 version has mud covered, more Asian looking people, in because that's kind of the area this island's supposed to be. Supposed to be, it's an island. I forget. There's one of the movies. The island is kind of near Hawaii. Not near Hawaii, but out in that direction, a little bit south, a little bit southeast of Hawaii. But still, you know, kind of that more of an Asian Pacific Islander kind of a thing, not really African. So other than that, I think the 1933 version holds up a little bit better. And it's, you know, it's 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 great. You know, it's uh, for what it's doing for being almost a hundred years ago. That is why it's number three. King Kong from 1933. Moving on to my second favorite King Kong movie. There's not that many to choose from. And I'm going to spoil it right now. Son of Kong isn't making the list. It was not good. The the direct sequel to the 1933 King Kong uh, put out like 10 months later. A clear cash grab. It's a smaller uh, King Kong in that one. Um, and shows like there's a scene where he like saves the director. Like the, the island sinking or whatever. It's a different island. I don't know. It's, it's, it doesn't really make sense. doesn't really fit in. And that's why it's not on the list. But moving on to my second favorite King Kong movie. This one is King Kong. The 1976 version of king kong which is my first time watching but i have been to the paramount studios lot in the past and seen the attraction on tv a few times so i've seen the animatronic giant animatronic king kong that they used for filming this and because they used a giant animatronic king kong it holds up amazingly well it holds up better than the 2005 king kong in my opinion. There are scenes where the green screen is clearly a little off, the lighting's a little off. It's clear that they're working with a giant animatronic uh, King Kong. Uh, they changed the story a little bit. Uh, instead of it being a director that's going to make this movie, it is a oil company that is going out there to survey this island that's been discovered. Uh, and then they have Jeff Bridges, the dude, uh, is a stowaway who's like more of an activist who's going there to uh, protect the animals or whatever that's going to be, and he becomes part of the mission. But it's this oil company that's going to drill on this island that they discovered. And when they get to the island, the island's shrouded in this cloud, which was different from the 33 version. They send the dinghy out to go survey the area, see if it's, there's the island is even there, and to see where they can actually, you know, get, d to, like, get off, get onto the island. Where's a good place to do it? Like, doing things intelligently. And then they get there, and again, similar to the 33 version, it's a bunch of black people, so still racism exists in Hollywood. Uh, they're wearing... Uh, in this one, they're wearing, like, these fur, like, they're doing a ceremony, and it's another thing where they're sacrificing uh, somebody to Kong, and they're wearing this, uh, like, almost like these ape kind of, like, arm covering things, uh, which were referenced to in the 2005 version uh, when they brought King Kong, and they're doing the stage play, the stage thing with King Kong there, and they're... They, they have the actors on stage are wearing those same kind of uh, things. So that's a little reference from the 76 version. Uh, guns, you know, they use guns to scare them off. Um, but yeah, I actually had a lot of fun with this movie. Uh, it, in a lot of ways, is different than the 33 version in the oil stuff and the cloud and everything. But then it's changed to being like, okay, this guy isn't going to get oil. Oil doesn't actually exist on this island, but this this giant ape does. So then it turns into the 33 version where uh, the guy 
uh, Charles Grodin, uh, playing the guy that's in charge of this mission, decides he's going to capture, which they just happen to have giant barrels of, uh, of um, chloroform available. Uh, but he decides he's going to capture King Kong and bring him back to... He, that's how he's going to be rich. So a little pivot there. And then when they get back to New York... Uh, it's in a giant arena, so it's like it's plausible that they could actually fit King Kong in there, which was nice. It also changed up. Instead of climbing the Empire State Building, uh, King Kong climbs the Twin Towers because the rock formation from his home island looked similar to the Twin Towers in the skyline of New York. So that makes sense. Um, also just interesting that they used the Twin Towers, two buildings that no longer exist anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, and it's instead of just having one attractive person, you know, Jessica Lange being the, the, uh, the white woman that this King Kong it falls desperately in love with, uh, there's also kind of a sexiness to it. Like there's a moment where King Kong's trying to take her clothes off. Uh, which is kind of makes sense for the 70s. It's very 70s out. Also, the fact how she gets there, her name is Dwan, like Dawn, but the letters are different, changed so, to be different. Spacey. She is like, like she is the muse by which all blonde jokes were created. Like that's how brain dead this, this character is. Um, and then Jeff Bridges has almost the same hairstyle but with a beard it is very like two beautiful people with like gorgeous sunsets in the background having conversations which i'm fine with i'm okay with that um but definitely but she comes she like they just happen to find her she's in a diggy because her yacht went down that she was on but the yacht was basically an orgy yacht like she was just out partying with people and the yacht went down. She ended up having, she ended up getting into the dinghy where everybody else just died and she gets picked up to bring. So it's like, even that is kind of like, I enjoyed how they changed up the story in, in ways, which, which made it more entertaining, not necessarily better, but more entertaining. The, the visual effects hold up better than the 2005 version does. Um, and it's basically a similar story to all three of them. Uh, so yeah, for a while, this was my number one, but it's not came down to my number two. Uh, so th by process of elimination, everybody should realize and understand what my number one is. So let's get to that. Shall we? Let's get to my number one. Join inspired disorder plus today, head on over to inspired disorder.com slash plus to join membership includes members only discounts and deals. You get access to the Ray Taylor show completely ad free, as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder, hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog, as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions. So if you want to start a podcast, you're into art, ask me anything. And so many more things are being added every day to Inspire Disorder Plus. So sign up today, become a member, head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspire Disorder Plus member today. My favorite King Kong movie, and I think the best, is Kong Skull Island. This is a movie that's clearly setting up for the King Kong Godzilla rivalry changes aspects of the King Kong story, which I'm completely fine with, but is a top to bottom fun movie. That's also trying to say things. This is came out in 2017 directed by Gordon Vaught Roberts. Uh, it is a, it's set in the seventies. So that's nice. You know, similarly to uh, the King Kong 1976 version. So this is fresh off of uh, the the Vietnam War ending, which part of that is part of the story where uh, there's a mission. This is a government mission to go survey this island, this new new island that's been discovered uh, by 
John Goodman and another character I forget. Uh, but they they're like scientists. They they Bill Randa uh, is John Goodman's character, and then his Houston Brooks I believe is the other scientist that's with them. So they convince the government to allow them to go do this surveying mission, and as protection they get Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, who is like an army sergeant colonel type of a guy, uh, Preston Picard. Uh, he is like a guy, obviously the war's over in Vietnam, but he's still ready for action. So he's all about going on this mission to provide transportation and protection for these scientists. Uh, so the scientist aspect is kind of similar to the 76 version, where it's like these this oil company going to survey this area. Um, when they get there, it's surrounded l by uh, a cloud, storms similar to the 76 version, except for in this one, they're flying helicopters through it. Uh, instead of having Godzilla versus the airplanes at the end of the movie, like all the other Godzilla movies, this one has Godzilla fighting these helicopters at the beginning of the movie, which is an epic way to introduce King Kong. Like... To these people going on in these helicopters, you got the, the typical 70s soundtrack that you hear, you hear in every 70s war movie going, blasting, and all of a sudden, chaos happens when they run into this even larger version of King Kong. And it is so much action, so much fun. You have the storylines of Samuel L. Jackson's character not wanting to end his his desire for war, constantly looking for people to be the next enemy, uh, King Kong being that, but then they realize that King Kong is actually trying to help them because there's other giant monsters that are. It introduces this Hollow Earth thing, which the 2005 or the Godzilla versus King Kong, the the way they visualize the Hollow Earth is not a Hollow Earth. It's like an Earth inside of an Earth. So it's not, it's not, and somehow there's sunlight in there. I don't know. There's a lot of aspects of the Godzilla versus Kong that, that didn't make sense. But this introduces that hollow earth kind of idea into that. And that King Kong is there to protect humanity from these giant creatures. Uh, and not only the creatures are giant, but we see like giant insects. Like there are so many great action things. I would say that one of the uh, members of the military that are there is an Asian guy that I think is supposed to be in reference to that original Asian guy, the stereotypical uh, cook, uh, but instead he's just a normal guy. He just happens to kind of look like that character, but he's just a military guy. Uh, so I appreciate that. I appreciate the lack of racism. You also have John C. Riley who plays as a World War II fighter pilot that crashed on that island with a uh, Japanese fighter pilot. And John C. Riley's character survived out of the two of them, but they became brothers. So there's this other character that's introduced, and John C. Riley is amazing in this. So fun, so funny, but, like, so good. Because he's also, like, the go-between between all of these people and the natives that live which i think the the look that they gave the natives was awesome the fact that they didn't try to make them into savages was nice uh so they handled that aspect a lot better um but all of the action in this is great i love it brie larson is kind of the she's she's a, a war photographer so she's almost kind of like the uh She's almost like the Jeff Bridges character in a way because Jeff Bridges became the photographer for this, that crew. Um, it's great. It is so much fun. They never take Godzilla off of the island. They just realize, they, I mean, the people that survive just realize that he needs to stay on that island. Um, and it's just the chaos that happens on the island. So much fun, though easily my number one i don't care that it changes the overall story it's not a direct remake it it has references to all of the originals but does it in a completely new way uh the 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 cg is the best out of all of the movies better than the godzilla versus kong 
which that one's probably just as good, maybe slightly not as not as interesting. Um, and then also a visual style of like that Vietnam kind of cinematography, uh, but with King Kong. I it's just great. Every aspect. I had so much fun rewatching this. I've re- I've watched this movie a, a bunch of times already. It's been a while though, uh, but I was excited knowing. Uh, that that was on the list of movies to watch. I was super excited to get back to it and uh, actually surprised at it being number one. I knew it would be high on the list, but I wasn't sure, especially since there's three movies that are kind of remakes of each other. Um, And this one did something new, and I like what they did that was new, and I think it, it was great. Top to bottom, Kong Skull Island, my number one favorite King Kong movie. So one more time, just to be clear... My, this is my top five King Kong movies. Starting off with number five, Godzilla vs. Kong. Number four is King Kong 2005. Number three is King Kong 1933. Number two is King Kong 1976. And my number one favorite King Kong movie is Kong Skull Island. <laughs> Let me know how you would rank the King Kong movies in the comments. Hit me up on social media. If there is an old school King Kong movie that I missed, let me know. I will revisit it. Uh, I know there's at least one that is involving uh, the Godzilla character. But, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my list. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you